What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I'm going to do a penetration test with my elephant gun and I'm going to shoot the 416 Ruger at some half inch three ply southern yellow pine plywood. This is your standard plywood that is used in residential construction for roofs and exterior walls. And we're going to be using two different types of ammunition in this test. And the goal of this test is to see how many sheets of standard plywood an elephant gun can penetrate through. And we're going to use the Hornady Dangerous Game Solids, which are a steel jacketed bullet. And we're going to use a Buffalo Bore TSX or Triple Shock X bullet, which is a 100% copper hollow point expanding bullet. Now the Hornady Dangerous Game Solid travels at around 2400 feet per second and it's a 400 grain bullet and it generates over 5,100 foot pounds of muzzle energy. And the Buffalo Bore TSX bullet travels at 2,400 feet per second it's also a 400 grain bullet and it also generates around 5,100 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Now I've actually chronographed these loads out of my Ruger guide gun, which is the gun that we're gonna be using in this test. And I found that my chronograph testing confirmed the factory numbers were correct. And I was getting around 2,400 feet per second out of the 20 inch barrel Ruger guide gun. And so that's the rifle that I'm going to be shooting these loads out of in my test. It's the Ruger Guide Gun. For those of you guys who don't know what that rifle is, it's a Ruger M77 Hawkeye rifle, but it's designed to shoot the 375 and 416 Ruger. Now, now the 416 Ruger was designed by Hornady and Ruger together, and the purpose of the cartridge is for class 4 dangerous game thick skin dangerous game and it was designed to be shot out of a standard length action and so this cartridge has a standard length of 3.35 inches long it's the same length as a 300 wind mag or a 30-06 but it can generate up to 5,500 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, which is double the energy of a 30-06. So this cartridge is an absolute sledgehammer for dangerous game and big game, and that's what it was designed for. And so what I did was I took these sheets of three-ply, half-inch southern yellow pine plywood, and I cut them into one-foot by one-foot squares. And then I screwed them all together by putting one screw in each corner, so four screws total. And I screwed together blocks of six sheets. And then I screwed all those blocks of six sheets into one giant block of about 160 sheets of plywood, okay? One foot by one foot squares, 160 one foot by one foot squares of plywood okay because i don't know how many sheets this thing is going to penetrate through so i went big because i didn't want to penetrate through all of them and then have to go back and redo the test again so i got 160 of these one foot by one foot squares of plywood and they're three ply half inch southern yellow pine plywood and i screwed them all together so I'm going to shoot at them at a distance of about 25 yards. I'm going to take one shot with the DGS, the 400 grain Hornady Dangerous Game Solid. And then I'm going to take one shot with the Buffalo Bore TSX. And we're going to see exactly how many sheets of standard building plywood an elephant gun can penetrate through. So stay tuned for the results of the test. And thanks for watching.
right, guys. So I took all the plywood back to the New York Prepper Top Secret Ballistics Analysis Lab, a.k.a. my garage. And what you're looking at here is all of the plywood that the 416 Ruger penetrated through. And what you're looking at here is 75 sheets of three-ply, half-inch, southern yellow pine plywood. And this is how many sheets the 400 grain dangerous game solid penetrated through and the buffalo bore 400 grain triple shock x penetrated through 24 sheets so very impressive penetration this is 37 inches of plywood and pretty much similar penetration as through solid wood one of the first ballistics tests that i did on my channel was the 416 Ruger versus 2x10 Lumber. And I'll attach a link up above if you want to watch that video. But in that video, the Dangerous Game Solid penetrated through 26 Douglas fir 2x10s. And if you do the math, 26 times an inch and a half for each 2x10, that comes out to 39 inches. And here we have 37 inches of plywood. So... The plywood was a little bit tougher to penetrate than standard wood, which is to be expected, uh, but not much, okay? But the plywood, you have different layers, and the grains alternate in different directions, so that's going to work against the bullet and slow it down faster than regular wood where you have a straight grain and the bullet can just punch right through the grain. Um, but... Nonetheless, 75 sheets of plywood, guys. That is just absolutely insane. That was with the Hornady 400 grain Dangerous Game Solid traveling at 2,400 feet per second, according to the box. Now, I have chronographed this load out of my Ruger guide gun, and I'll attach a link up above to that video. There's some people on the internet that say that with the Ruger guide gun, you can't actually achieve the velocities that are stated on the box of the Hornady DGS and DGX rounds, but I proved that false. That's just a myth put out by uh, haters of Hornady, and I'm not a huge fan of Hornady. I'm not like a you know Hornady fan or anything like a crazy Hornady guy or anything like that. But uh, I averaged around 2,390 feet per second out of my 20 inch barrel Ruger guide gun with the 400 grain dangerous game solid. So very impressive results guys, three feet of plywood. Okay. That's what it took to stop this elephant gun round with a steel jacketed solid. That is just an immense amount of penetration. I've also shot this same round through a two foot diameter, fresh piece of red oak. And I'll attach a link up above if you want to check that video out. It just punched right through that two-foot diameter oak like a piece of paper. It was just insane. This round is just incredible uh, at penetrating, and that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to stop Class 4 thick skin dangerous game uh, with very minimal shots, okay? Um, but the Buffalo Boar... 400 grain triple shock X, which has a stated velocity of 2,400 feet per second. Now, out of my Ruger guide gun, I actually got a little bit higher velocity when I chronographed it. I got like 2,430 feet per second, so a little bit higher than the uh, Buffalo Bore numbers, but uh, that one penetrated through 24 sheets of plywood, which is just insane. That's um, 12 inches of plywood. And also pretty similar penetration to solid wood. When I did the 2x10 test, the TSX 400 grain buffalo bore penetrated through around 11 to 12 2x10s. Those were Douglas for 2x10s. And if you do the math, 12 times 1.5, that's about 18 inches of penetration. So in plywood, that TSX got 12 inches of penetration. So... It had a little bit more difficulty penetrating in the plywood, which makes sense because you have the alternating grains, like I said. 
But this is just some really insane penetration here, guys. I mean, look at all this wood, okay? Three feet of wood, of plywood, okay? And it just punched right through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all these sheets and show you guys the expansion on the TSX. And I'm going to go through these a little bit closer. I'm going to show you up close what the results were in the woods. So you can see what kind of damage the bullets did, what kind of wound channel they left inside of the wood. And then I'm going to pull the bullets out, take a closer look at them, see what kind of expansion the TSX had and what kind of weight retention i'm pretty sure 100 percent weight retention but uh this was a really fun test i have a bunch more planned so stay tuned to my channel for more plywood penetration tests and i'm going to show you guys in more detail now what these bullets did to the plywood and i'm going to pull the bullets out and we'll take a closer look so stay tuned all right guys so these were my two shots right here Got the DGS over here and the TSX over here. Okay, I also took some shots with my 300 Win Mag. That's going to be in a separate video. So what I did was I screwed all these pieces of plywood in sections of six. Okay, so I took six sheets and screwed them together. So I made these little blocks of six sheets of plywood. So here we got, so remember where the DGS is right there, TSX over here. All right, so here's block number one. And here's the exit hole from block number one. There's the TSX. There's the DGS. So that's six sheets already here. Now we're on block number two. Here we got the TSX and the DGS all right, you can see this massive hole here, okay? I could basically fit my whole finger in there. It's probably about a quarter inch diameter. Here's the DGS. Here's that exit hole from the TSX. Look at how big that exit hole is, guys, compared to my thumb. It's just a massive hole there. Look at that. Here's the hole from the DGS. This is already 12 sheets here, 12 sheets of plywood. Here we're on the third block of six sheets. Here we got the hole from the DGS. Here's the hole from the TSX. And you can see how big that hole is compared to my thumb. Look at that, guys. Just absolutely insane. Huge, massive amount of penetration here. Here's the back of the third block of six. Okay, you can see this massive uh, lump here, okay? Look at how big that lump is in the back of this piece of plywood here. This is the 18th sheet of plywood. Look at how big that, that hole is there. The hydrostatic shock from this is probably massive, okay? Uh, here's the hole from the DGS. All right, now we're on the fourth block. Fourth block of six. Look at the size of this hole, guys, compared to my thumb. And I have big hands. I don't have small hands. Look at that, guys. Just absolutely insane. This is probably like an inch and a half diameter, okay? Uh, here's the hole from the DGS still going through. Okay, so this is the 24th sheet of plywood here. And you can see it stopped in the 24th sheet, I'm saying that it penetrated 24 because part of the bullet went through the 24th sheet and if there wasn't anything behind it, like another piece of plywood, it would have probably just kept going through. But because it hit this piece of plywood, it uh, stopped it. But um, So we're just gonna say 24 sheets here, but that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna take a closer look, but you can see the expansion is perfect on that. And uh, you can see the DGS is uh, still going through the wood, okay? 24th sheet here, okay? And uh, moving on to the fifth block of six. Here we have the DGS still going. And then you can see this big hole in the 25th sheet of plywood, but it didn't actually penetrate. It just left this big gnarly hole in there, okay? It's 
pretty uh, pretty big. Now here's the back of the fifth block of six. Here we have the DGS over there, uh, or over here, I'm sorry. And the other hole is from the 300 Win Mag, so just don't pay attention to that. Uh, so that's the 30th sheet of plywood. Here we're on the sixth block. Okay, you can see the DGS still going through. Here we have the back of the sixth block. This is the uh, 36th sheet of plywood. Okay, you can see uh, still going through. Again, the other hole is from the 300 Win Mag. All right, guys, so we already went through 36 sheets of plywood. And I'm just going to quickly show you the rest. This is how much we have left here. Okay, here we have entrance hole. Exit hole. Okay, I think this is uh, another stack of six. Here we have, uh, I don't know how many I stacked on this one, but we got a bunch here. Here's our entrance hole. Exit hole. Almost done. Just want to prove to you guys I'm not making this up. Entrance hole. Exit hole right there. Almost done. Wow. So many sheets of plywood here. Another entrance hole here. Here's an exit hole. Here's our last five sheets. We got our 72nd sheet here. 73rd sheet. 74th sheet. And you can see the base of the bullet right there. And you can see that steel jacket. Look at how thick that steel jacket is. Very thick. Okay, very little bit of lead in that bullet there. It's mostly steel. All right, here's the 74th sheet and the 75th sheet. The bullet nose went out the 75th sheet and got stuck. Okay, in the 74th and 75th sheet, it's actually holding these two pieces of plywood together. So I'm going to say, like I said, 75 sheets of penetration. And the reason why is because if there wasn't any wood behind it, this bullet would have kept going and it would have penetrated through 75 sheets. And here is the 76th sheet. You can see it left this big dent in it, okay? So I'm going to take the bullets out. I'm going to give you guys a closer look now at the bullets so you can see what they look like. And I'm going to show you guys some of the damage that was done to the plywood by the TSX so stay tuned all right guys this is the 24th sheet of plywood and you can see the damage that the 400 grain TSX did to the plywood look at that huge hole and how it just bent the plywood um, the force is just absolutely insane look at that the hydrostatic shock on this round must be insane perfect mushroom it's exactly what we want to see so look at that so this is the 18th sheet and you can see this huge hole here absolutely massive okay look at that compared to my thumb it's probably about an inch and a half in diameter massive hole there Here's the back of the 18th sheet. Look at that exit hole. Here's the 19th sheet. Look at that hole, guys. Just absolutely insane. I just can't believe how much damage that TSX did. Okay, you definitely... Look at that. Just absolutely insane. This is why these rounds are made for large dangerous game because of this huge wound channel that they create and the penetration is just unreal um, just many many times more penetration than standard 30 caliber sporting rifles 
and much more expansion on the bullets. Look at that, guys. That is just insane. Look at that huge hole. It looks like it got hit by a slug, but that's not a slug. That's just an expanding 416 caliber bullet. There's the exit hole. Now we're on the 23rd sheet here. This is the 23rd sheet. Pretty impressive, guys. Look at that. Look at how it just buckled the wood out. Look at that. That's just insane. Very impressive. So I'm going to pull these bullets out now, and we'll get a closer look, so stay tuned. All right, guys. So before I weigh these bullets and measure the expansion, I want to just give you a close-up look so you guys can see what they look like up close. So on the left, you have the 400 grain TSX. And on the right, you have the Hornady DGS Dangerous Game Solid. You can see the Dangerous Game Solid had zero deformation. And that's normal because it is a solid. It's mostly made of steel. There's a small lead core. As you can see, a little bit of lead coming out of the base. But you can see that steel jacket is extremely thick. But I'm pretty sure the steel jacket gets thicker as it comes up to the nose. And then the nose is basically like solid steel. And then you have this really thick jacket in the base. So uh, this thing will bust through pretty much anything. Um, it's basically like armor piercing. You can think of it like armor piercing. You can see the rifling marks on the copper jacket. Okay. So this has a hard lead core, and again, that core is very small, and then it has a very thick steel jacket, and then it has a very, very thin copper jacket on top of the steel, just so it doesn't mess up the bore of your rifle, because you don't want a pure steel bullet traveling down your barrel, um, so they put a little bit of copper on the outside. All right, but there's the rifling marks on it, okay? You can see some wood still stuck to the jacket, all right? The nose is completely intact, all right? I mean, you could pretty much clean this bullet up and reload it. I mean, it's basically no change in it at all, all right? Very impressive. And then here we have the 400 grain TSX. Another impressive bullet. This thing is solid copper, okay? And uh, look at that base, just pure copper. This bullet is 100% copper, 400 grains. Look at that nice expansion, okay? Perfect expansion. So I want to actually compare these bullets to some common rounds, and you'll be surprised at how massive these elephant gun bullets are, okay? So on the left, you have the Hornady DGS, and on the right, guess what that is? That's a 44 Magnum, okay? This is a 240 grain hollow point 44 Magnum. And you can see that the, the bullet of the 416 Ruger is basically the same size as the whole cartridge of a 44 Magnum, okay? Look at that. That is just absolutely insane, okay? Um, and look at the base, okay? There's 44 rem mag, and uh, I mean, that's just insane, okay? Look at how massive this bullet is, very long bullet. This has a very high sectional density, okay? It's a 416 caliber bullet, and it's 400 grains. It has a sectional density of 0 .330, which is very high. This thing has just immense penetration, okay? And uh, here's just the standard 9mm FMJ, and uh, I want to compare that to this TSX, okay? And look at the TSX compared to the 9mm. I mean, it just makes that 9mm look like a baby, okay? Um, look at the size difference, and this is just the bullet, okay? This is just the bullet here. The bullet is bigger than the whole 9mm. I mean, that is just 
ridiculous. Look at that. Absolutely insane. Look at that. Compare the noses here. Look at the difference, okay? Just imagine the damage that this thing does to a dangerous game animal inside. I mean, just this thing is just super lethal and uh, puts down animals quickly, which is what you want. Look at that. So I'm going to weigh these bullets now and we'll take some measurements. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure that 400 grain dangerous game solid. Show you guys how long the bullet is. Almost an inch and a half long, okay? That is just a very long bullet. Insane, okay? Almost as long as a whole 44 Magnum. Very impressive. And here we have the 400 grain TSX, which is still very long even after expanding. It's almost an inch and a quarter long after expanding. Look at that. Okay, so now I'm going to measure the expansion. We're going to see how big... This bullet expanded. So it expanded almost to three quarters of an inch, 0.67 inches of expansion. That is just absolutely insane. Okay. That's a lot of expansion, guys. Just absolutely insane. So I'm going to weigh these bullets now. We'll see what kind of weight retention we got. All right, guys, I'm just going to calibrate my scale. This is a Lyman reloading scale. We're just going to make sure it's zeroed out. It says pass. That means it's zeroed out. And we're going to switch over to grains now. We're going to start with the DGS. Nearly 100% weight retention. 399.6 grains. Okay. Let's just put that on again. 399.6 okay so just as expected with that bullet here we have the TSX also should get almost 100% 399.3 grains okay so basically 99.9% .9 weight retention that is just insane guys so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned to my channel for more ballistics testing with various cartridges. I have several plywood penetration tests planned, so stay tuned to my channel for more plywood penetration tests, including 308, 300 Win Mag, 44 Magnum, 500 Magnum, 12 gauge shotgun, 4570, and others. So stay tuned to my channel for more plywood penetration tests. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if there's any other tests you want me to do. Take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.